August 25th, 2017. Hurricane Harvey made landfall in southeast Texas. Over the next several days, torrential amounts of rain fell onto the Houston metropolitan area, causing catastrophic flooding in the region. The Arkema Chemical Plant in Crosby, Texas, sat in the path of the storm. The facility manufactures and distributes organic peroxides used to produce consumer goods, such as solid surface countertops and polystyrene cups and plates. Some organic peroxides at the Arkema plant must be kept below 32 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent them from decomposing and catching fire. By August 31st, an unprecedented amount of rain caused equipment at the Arkema plant to flood and fail. Organic peroxides decomposed and burned, releasing fumes and smoke into the air. Over the next several days, more than 350,000 pounds of organic peroxides combusted. 21 people sought medical attention from reported exposures to the fumes, and more than 200 residents living nearby the facility were evacuated and could not return home for a week. In recent years, severe rainfall has caused increased flooding around the country, and government experts project that this trend may continue. Companies should better understand how their facilities could be vulnerable and strengthen their plans for dealing with extreme weather, such as floods or other natural disasters. On Friday, August 25th, Hurricane Harvey approached Texas, and in response, the Arkema facility fully shut down. The hurricane made landfall near Corpus Christi as a Category 4 storm around 10 p.m. Soon after, rain began to fall at the Arkema plant. The next day, Saturday, August 26, 12 Arkema workers, known as a rideout crew, were on site as part of the facility's hurricane preparedness plan. Hurricane Harvey remained in the area, dumping historic amounts of rain over southeast Texas. Water levels rose at the facility, threatening electrical equipment. The rideout crew had never experienced such high levels of water at the facility and continually believed that the water would stop rising at any moment. By Sunday, August 27th, the rideout crew proactively shut off power to a number of buildings, including some low temperature warehouses and their generators as rising flood water approached electrical equipment. The low temperature warehouses are used to store organic peroxides. Without power, the low temperature warehouses were at risk of not staying cool enough to prevent decomposition of the organic peroxides. The rideout crew began moving the chemicals into low temperature warehouses located on higher ground that still had power. They also moved some of the organic peroxides onto refrigerated trailers. When the trailers were full, the rideout crew moved them to an area of the plant that was at higher elevation than elsewhere, where water levels were lowest. By that night, only the largest low temperature warehouse still had power, and it was the only one still storing organic peroxides. At this point, the rideout crew believed the flood water would not continue to rise and with all the low temperature organic peroxides in refrigerated trailers or the functioning low temperature warehouse, they thought the chemicals were safe. Rain, however, continued to fall. Around 2 a.m. on Monday, August 28th, the facility's main transformers flooded, leaving the entire plant without power. The last backup generators kicked on and provided power to the remaining low temperature warehouse. But workers believed those generators would soon flood as well. They decided to move all of the organic peroxides out of the warehouse and onto refrigerated trailers. Soon after this decision was made, the last generators flooded and shut down. In the meantime, heavy rain from Hurricane Harvey persisted and water levels continued to rise. During the day on Monday, the vehicle used to relocate refrigerated trailers flooded leaving the rideout crew with no way to move three of the trailers to higher ground. As a result, those trailers remained in a high water portion of the plant near the warehouses. The cooling system for those trailers remained operational, so workers continued to move organic peroxides from the last warehouse onto the three refrigerated trailers. By Monday night, 
the plant's forklifts also flooded. Workers moved individual one-gallon containers of organic peroxides through floodwaters by hand until the low-temperature warehouse was emptied. All told, workers moved over 300,000 pounds of organic peroxides onto nine refrigerated trailers during the storm, including over 2,000 containers by hand at night. By the morning of Tuesday, August 29th, it became clear that at least one of the three refrigerated trailers that could not be moved to higher ground was going to fail. With refrigeration on those trailers lost, there would be nothing to stop the chemicals inside from heating up and catching fire. Arkema management decided that the remaining workers would need to evacuate the facility. The Crosby Fire Department evacuated the workers. Arkema management informed emergency responders that the organic peroxides would likely begin to decompose and catch fire sometime in the near future. A decision was made to evacuate everyone in a one and a half mile radius of the plant and wait for the trailers to burn. On Thursday, August 31st, the organic peroxides inside one of the trailers began to decompose rapidly. Two police officers who were in charge of monitoring the evacuation zone around the facility drove through the zone to respond to a call and reported driving through white smoke. Once the smoke was reported, emergency responders shut down the highway. Two volunteer firefighters were then sent to see if there was a fire at the plant. They drove along the closed highway, but did not see any smoke. Since the highway was one of very few passable roads in the area, it was reopened. The police officers who had originally driven through the smoke began to suspect they had been exposed to chemicals from the Arkema plant. Accompanied by three other police officers, they decided to make their way through the evacuation zone to the incident command station for medical attention. By this time, the responders reported that black smoke was observed on the highway. All five police officers reported experiencing nausea, severe headaches, and other symptoms of chemical exposure. The decomposing organic peroxides inside the refrigerated trailer caught fire and burned. By the next day, two more trailers were in flames. On Sunday, September 3rd, the six remaining trailers had not yet caught on fire as expected. Emergency responders initiated a controlled burn of the organic peroxides. Afterwards, the evacuation order was lifted and neighbors were allowed back into their homes. No one was killed during the incident at Arkema. But despite the one and a half mile evacuation zone, Emergency responders were exposed to chemicals as they drove on the adjacent highway that was open even after smoke was initially spotted coming from the plant. This incident demonstrates the difficulty of weighing options during an emergency response. The incident in Arkema occurred within the larger emergency of Hurricane Harvey and the needs of strictly enforcing an evacuation zone conflicted with the needs of responding to a catastrophic storm. It was understandable that the highway was initially kept open, but after smoke was first reported, the highway should have been closed and alternate routes established. Arkema had multiple safety systems in place to ensure that organic peroxides were kept cold. These included redundant refrigeration systems in the low temperature warehouses, emergency generators, and the refrigerated trailers. But these safeguards all failed during Hurricane Harvey from the same common mode of failure, flood water. During its investigation, the CSB found that the team at Arkema that performed a process hazard analysis for the low temperature warehouses did not document the risk posed by severe flooding at the plant. The Arkema facility was constructed before any flood insurance maps or studies of the area were completed. The first flood map the CSB could locate for the area was issued in 1985. This map showed that the Arkema facility was at a minimal flood risk. But the CSB found that later, in 2007, a significant revision to the map was made, which showed that the entire Arkema facility sat within a floodplain. Although a September 2016 report from Arkema's insurer identified the risk of flooding using that map, the insurer made no recommendations related to flooding. And in addition, 
Although federal regulations require companies to compile process safety information, flood insurance maps and related studies are not specifically required. Because it is not required to consider information about the risk of flooding when analyzing hazards at a facility, other companies may also be unaware of the potential for flooding to create process safety hazards. And the CSB found that even if the Arkema team had evaluated flooding, there is limited industry guidance on the subject. That guidance would likely have been insufficient to provide specific or sufficiently conservative levels of action to protect against the hazards posed by the immense flooding that occurred during Hurricane Harvey. More robust industry guidance is needed to help hazardous chemical facilities better prepare for extreme weather events like flooding so that similar incidents can be avoided. The CSB provided the following key lessons for companies with chemical manufacturing, handling, or storage facilities located within areas that are susceptible to extreme weather, such as flooding. Facilities should perform an analysis to determine what potential extreme weather events they are susceptible to, such as flooding, earthquakes, and high winds. During process hazard analyses, or when performing a facility siting, companies should evaluate the potential risk of extreme weather events and the adequacy of safeguards. When evaluating and mitigating the risk from extreme weather events, facilities should strive to apply a sufficiently conservative risk management approach. And when considering flooding, facilities should ensure that critical safeguards and equipment are not susceptible to failure by a common cause and that independent layers of protection are available in the event of high water levels. Our report on the incident at Arkema and lessons learned will help the chemical industry take informed, proactive steps to understand the risks presented by floods and other natural disasters and appropriate actions to safeguard vulnerable facilities and equipment. These improvements will protect workers, emergency responders, and members of the public from the threat of chemical incidents resulting from extreme weather. Thank you for watching the CSB Safety Video. For more information, please visit csb.gov.